Ladies, gentlemen, good afternoon. This is author and philosopher Germinal Van. And today I would like to speak to you guys about social justice. Who created that concept? Where does it come from? And why is it today the biggest um, social ideology that everyone is uptight to and believe that it will fix the inequalities that exist among human beings? First of all, let's talk about justice itself. Justice is simply a social institution in which a third party impartially adjudicate a dispute. And usually that dispute is rectifying a wrong deed, a tort. That's where it comes tort law. It's when someone uh, commit a wrong deed upon someone else. It could be theft, it could be uh, dispossessing someone of whatever he or she has. So that's what justice is about. Justice is simply to rectify something that was previously done wrong. But now, social justice. What is the difference between justice and social justice? What has it been done wrong for us to call it social justice? The thing about social justice is that it simply means the equal distribution of wealth, the equal access to opportunities, and the reduction of unfair privilege. You know, in the West and especially in the United States, it has been believed that a lot of people have um, in inherited the wealth of their parents although it is not true because the data show that 88 percent of self-made men in the u.s are billionaires i can give some names uh bill gates grant cardon uh, uh patrick bet david um, elon musk and so on so oprah uh, pdd all these people are all self-made millionaires. Nonetheless, we keep saying that if the millionaires are millionaires is because they took something away from the rest of the population. The current message that is spread around the country is that the top 1% is wealthier than the bottom 99% all combined. And that it is unjust. Why? How come a small, such a small fraction of individuals control all the wealth of an entire nation, while those who produce that wealth have nothing? So we need social justice to, um, to break that injustice but the question is who created social justice social justice in fact originates from the theory of man-made exploitation of course that that theory was developed by none no other than Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels in Das Kapital the um, the communist manifesto and uh, the condition of the working class in England. Those three communist slash socialist books were the core theory of social justice, saying that um, those who own the mean of production, so those who we call the capitalists, they own the means of production and the value that they're able to create from the means of production they have is based on the surplus of output that the workers who work for them have produced. So that is the theory here that says that and that uh, surplus they have produced has been unfairly done, which means that they've done it against their will. They've, they were exploited, in other words. So we have to redistribute the wealth. We have to fix that wrongdoing. We have to, um, to equalize access to resources, access to wealth, and reduce the privilege. As I, as I said earlier, 
the people who became millionaire and billionaires in this country are self-made which means that they start like the 99 percent of the rest of the people in this country and they work their way up to be where they are today the thing with social justice is that it's a very arbitrary concept it's arbitrary because it does not seek to understand how the person who have access to private property did get access to it it doesn't seek to understand how the person that has access to private property managed to expand that access to private property to other resources all it says is that if that person that has access to property did so was because he took it from someone else so there is a leap of logic in the way social justice operates on the reasoning why we need to redistribute the wealth so because someone has access to private property it says that so you stole it from those who produce so we need to use the third party in our instance it's of course no other than the government we need to use the government to equalize access to resources access to opportunities and to reduce the uh, the privileges but by doing so government by nature is coercion by doing so you are actually depriving the person who has worked hard to have access to private property you are actually depriving him of his good to give it to someone else who doesn't have it based on the mere fact that he or she doesn't have it that is substantively wrong to start with and by doing so the government used means such as taxation and other method to, to enforce that coercion on those who have the means of production. Even by doing so, when the government tries to, um, to redistribute the wealth equally, those to whom it redistributes the wealth still don't benefit from it because the government imposes some regulatory rules upon them too in order to benefit from that income being redistributed and that income being redistributed is even not enough for them and when it comes to access to opportunities it has been said that the majority of minorities in this country do not have access to the same opportunities that the dominant uh, race which is the European race in America has access to opportunities here too there is a leap of logic it says that the minorities because of discrimination of the history they've been through the history of oppression they've been through their access to opportunities it is limited so we have to create some forms of ways to give them that access so that's where affirmative action come from but the problem with that is that you subverting by doing so you subverting in the first place meritocracy it means that you accept someone in an institution not based on the value of his skills his abilities his knowledge his judgment or whatever Basically, you don't accept someone based on the human capital that he offers, but you accept him, accept him or her simply based on his physical appearance. But physical appearance doesn't determine the skill of someone. Now we have schools or, you know, in the workplace, we have like uh, companies saying, oh, we, we need a, uh, a transgender in our team sure it sounds nice because you want to diversify you want to have all kind of people in one team so that they can work together we understand that nonetheless is it because that you are transgender that you can necessarily perform the job if you don't have the skills that's a question or when the school say oh we need um our student body needs two-thirds of them to be black or to be uh hispanic to show diversity yeah but what if the most of those two-thirds students don't have the the level to to sustain in the program they're going to literally 
diminish the level of the program itself so people have to lower the standards in order for those to for, in order for those people to actually keep up so it's not about this this is not justice here true justice is when you match individuals with what they worth and what they worth with what they need i rather go to a small school but at least I know that I will finish at the top of my class rather than going to Harvard or Yale and finish at the bottom and I got accepted just because I'm black or I'm African or I speak French and etc. That's that to me those are not metrics, they're not adequate metrics to determine the value of someone. It's like you have pro probably a um, surgery and you're looking for the best doc for the best doctor. Are you going to say, oh, because that doctor is not black, I don't want him? You're looking for the best doctor to proceed to proceed to your surgery so that you can stay alive. Otherwise, you're going to die. It's not a matter of race. It's not a matter of uh, ethnicity. It's not a matter of gender or religion. But that's the issue with social justice. Social justice says that Minorities, so basically it's everyone else who is not a white male. So minorities do not have access to opportunities. But here's the opportunity here. Let's say two families. One family is low income, not too educated, and the other is. But uh, during dinner, one family always speak about sports. You know, oh, the last touchdown was this, or this team won, and etc. And the other family that is more, that is a little more well off, speaks about uh, education and information. So they talk about, I don't know, like biology, or you know, the different factors in biology that enable the sustentation of human life. They speak about that at dinner. And the kids that are participating in each of these uh, discussion both apply to Harvard who do you think has a greater chance to get into Harvard when one all these families talk about talks about is sports and entertainment and the other where all these family talks about is information education and anything that stimulate intell the intellect of course is the kid that uh, speaks about education and information that has a higher chance to get into Harvard. So these are little factors that those in favor of social justice don't pay attention to or refuse to to take into consideration. Because personal responsibility is a strong factor in the ascension of any individual in society. People who have made it in life have not made it on the mere fact that they have inherited the wealth of the predecessors. Even if they have inherited the wealth, there is no guarantee that they will still make it unless they make rational decisions that will enable them to be where they are. That's, that's the thing. Personal responsibility matters. Oprah Winfrey, Winfrey is a black woman. Who is a billionaire? How do you justify that she's a billionaire? Yes, she was a victim of discrimination. I agree. But she did not rely on social justice to have access to, to, um, to the resources she had in order to become who she is today. She made rational choices in order to give herself the access to the resources she needs to in order to grow that's what she has done jay-z black man who became the first a uh, billionaire as a rapper same thing for diddy so what i'm trying to say is using the government and using coercion to enforce equality does not create equality. It does not even benefit that those who are supposed to benefit from it. That's where the predicament is. 
because it is easy to always point the finger at the other one and saying he if he is in that position it is because he stole something from me to me social justice just creates more resentment more jealousy more envy you basically resent people for the good fortune when you see someone who has the economic means to sustain themselves in life instead of resenting that person trying to see how that person did it to be where he or she is instead of resenting and say like oh this guy didn't work hard and he is where he is today as i said at the beginning 88 percent of millionaires and billionaires in this country are self-made only 12 percent have inherited the wealth of their parents or their predecessors 12 percent is not even the quarter that means that it's it's relatively low 88 percent it's three quarters it's way over two-thirds of the pie so that so that alone shows that there is a fallacy in the logic of social justice and those social justice warriors who are so intolerant who are literally using force in order to preach equality that's that's the problem with equality that's the problem with enforcing justice where there is no need to be justice because the true justice here is personal responsibility is to work in order to alleviate yourself from a precarious condition to a better condition because so long as we will still believe in that theory of man-made exploitation so long as we will still believe that social justice is the answer to fix the wrong deed we are actually moving towards serfdom we're actually moving toward authoritarianism and totalitarianism relying on an individual's uh, physical attributes i will not even say attribute of i will say features relying on an individual's physical features to determine its value is simply wrong it's substantially wrong it is not because you are white that your iq is necessarily higher than any minority it is not because that you are black that you're necessarily better at, at uh i don't know running than others it is not because that you're jewish that you're smarter than the rest of the people it is not because that you're transgender that you deserve to be here no you deserve to be somewhere because you're an individual who has used his skills and his human capital to be where he's at which means that you have used your knowledge and your judgment you make you have made rational decisions that have led you to the condition in which you are today so ladies and gentlemen that was my little uh, allocution of the day on social justice Please leave some comments and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Until then, see you guys soon.